What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Who Gives a Dram. Episode 40 we're on this week. 40 episodes in. If you're a returning listener, thank you so much for tuning back in. If you're a new listener, I hope you enjoy the podcast. Um, Thanks for checking out Who Gives a Dram. Uh, I am your host, Connor Gilbert. And you guys, if you haven't already, check out The Grapevine Media www.thegrapevinemedia.com This podcast is presented by The Grapevine Media Me and my buddy started a, a media uh, platform, content platform Got a lot of cool podcasts on there, check them out um, I'm going to come out right and say, you guys, it's this is a late night podcast This is a podcast I'm recording in the middle of the week This is a podcast that I'm recording at 9.38pm And uh, I'm tired, I'm not going to lie, I'm tired Um I have a crazy week coming up. This, so today's Wednesday, August 11th. My pinhook episode came out today. And, um, you know, I I had to record today because I have a wedding to go to tomorrow. Shout out to Tyler De La Porta, his wife, uh, Meg. Two of my favorite people in the world. Love them. Excited to go to that. Then this weekend, I have a bachelor party for my cousin Matt, one of my best friends in the entire world. Going to have a great weekend up in Northern Mass, up in the woods, in a cabin, drinking some good whiskey, smoking some good cigars, and probably doing a lot of things I shouldn't be talking about. Um, But I will have an update on that next podcast, which will be technically two weeks from today. Um, But other than that, you guys, it's a nighttime podcast. Wednesday night, just got back from the gym. This is the only time I have to record, so I'm recording right now. Um, Before we get Further deeper in the podcast, make sure you guys are checking me out on Instagram at Who Gives a Dram. Uh, make sure you're subscribed on all platforms, you guys. That's what helps me out the most. Make sure you get my episodes downloaded to your phone or device or laptop or whatever you're listening on uh, automatically. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, you know, um, uh, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Breaker, YouTube. YouTube's a big one, you guys. Let's grow the YouTube, uh, the YouTube um, channel a little bit. Um, what other business do I got? Uh, TikTok and Facebook as well, who gives a dram. Make sure you just, just Google who gives a dram and subscribe with whatever comes up. Um, other than that, you guys, that's all I got for business. That's all I got for business. It's a late night podcast. I don't know what's going to happen. I have a few bullet points of stuff I want to touch on. We're doing Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. Um, we got a, a, a good, a good podcast coming up. It's always a good podcast. Um, but yeah, so I just I uh, before I recorded this podcast, I decided to go on Instagram Live, uh, just to check on check in with my peeps, check in with my uh, whoever wanted to join to join in and watch me. Um, so that was cool. I had my buddy that one dude Ryan come on. Um, he's that one dude Ryan on Instagram and on TikTok. I'm sure you've seen him on TikTok. He's pretty prominent within the whiskey TikTok community. Um, we had a really good conversation. Really, really enjoyed our conversation there. Um, and actually, I actually had a few shout outs I wanted to give uh, this week on the podcast and he was one of them. I still have another one that I'll, that I'll do later on, but he was one of them because he's been following me since I can remember. We connected a while ago. He always likes my TikToks. He always, you know, we we message back and forth every once in a while and he will be coming on the podcast soon so we can talk TikTok fame because we're both TikTok famous. Uh, we can talk content creation in the whiskey space. We can, we can drink good whiskey together. So that one dude, Ryan, shout out to you, brother. You're a good dude. And, uh, you're one of those people that make being a whiskey content creator worth it from the connections that we make there. So, uh, shout out to him. Uh, of course, a train's going by. It's 9.45 at night and a train's going by. Why wouldn't it be? Um, it's hot in my studio. I don't have AC in my studio. And I'm hot and I'm sweating. I'm wearing my Brock Lesnar Suplex City cutoff and I'm sweating right through it. I tell you what. Um, it's hot. It's humid. It was a crappy day today. Um, speaking of AC, I do want to touch on this point, though. Um, last episode, I mentioned... My my absolutely lunatic state of mind of not wanting to get an air conditioner so I could appreciate air conditioning once I do step inside it and not have air conditioning in my own house because my old air conditioner broke. Yeah, that that um that lasted about three whole days, and then I didn't sleep one night because I was so hot, and I uh, 
the next day after work I went to Home Depot and bought a bought a air conditioner for $150 and honestly I got my air conditioner in right now and it's going on high blast in my in my bedroom and I cannot wait to end this podcast so I can just go to bed and just sit in the cold weather or the cold the cold temperature and just go to bed <laughs> I cannot wait to do that um so that's where we're at with a with a little air conditioner update um yeah I don't know why I thought that I don't know why I thought that'd be a good idea Sometimes I just have stupid ideas, and that was for sure one of them. Um, I mean, why would you want to think that being hot would make you, of course it's going to make you appreciate air conditioning, but why would you think that if you can just go out and buy one for 150 bucks? I don't, I don't know. I don't know, you guys, but I got one now. I figured you guys might want to update on that AC situation, situation so uh, we got that taken care of. Um, today is the 40th episode of who gives a dram. And that means a lot to me because I mean, we're 40 episodes in 40 reviews in, um, I wanted to pick a kind of big deal whiskey for it. And I was looking for Elijah Craig toasted barrel for the longest time. Well, I wasn't really looking for it. That's a, that's the wrong word. I knew toasted barrel was good. I had a lot of my whiskey friends tell me that it's definitely worth it. Um, and a few months ago, it's probably in the beginning of the summer, maybe maybe May-ish, like mid to late May, I, uh, I went into a liquor store right down the road from my office. And this is just a dusty old liquor store, nothing special. Um, I went in and uh, I actually prior bought my Elijah Craig B521 from this guy because he was the first guy I saw to get it in. And I look on the top shelf, and there's one Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel there. And it was it was kind of like on my list of if I see this, I'm going to buy it type of thing because I'm a big Elijah Craig fan, as you can tell from the five Elijah Craig Barrel Proof reviews I've done so far on the podcast, plus the small batch. And um, I bought it, obviously. I got the bottle right here. Um, I forgot how much I paid for it, but it was it was cool that I was able to find that bottle there's nothing better than finding a bottle you're looking for on the shelf. I mean, there's just nothing better. It's when you're looking for a bottle and you finally find it, it's just such a great feeling. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the feeling you get when you finally drink a bourbon, you've been dying to drink is great. That's how I felt with this. It's nothing super, super special. It's not like a Buffalo trace product or, a you know, like any of those typical bourbons that you would, you know, be dying to try. Um, but it is allocated a bit and it's, I've never, I never had it and I was excited to do it. Uh, I was excited to buy it. I cracked it open as soon as I got home, which I always do. Um, but I haven't had this in a few weeks or probably a few months now. So this is going to be a brand new, uh, a totally, a totally, new experience for me re- uh, reviewing it on the podcast. Cause I don't remember what I got from it. Um, so I'm excited to do that. Elijah Craig Toast Barrel. We'll go back into that in a little bit, uh, going to uh, the review there. Um, but today's the 40th episode, like I just said, and number 40. We're doing Athlete of the Week. Number 40 for uh, the 40th episode is going to be um, the great Chicago Bears running back, Gale Sayers. Um, I don't think he ever won a Super Bowl I could be wrong Hall of Fame running back don't know his stats um number 40 don't know much about Gale Sayers I just know that he's good and that's that's about it so today's the Gale Sayers episode of who gives a dram number 40 um so that's cool um so what have what have I been drinking this week I guess we can talk about that for a minute um what did I drink this week I had a pre-show pour today because I needed it because I had a, a solid squat workout at the gym. Um, did some calves. Last week I said I was tapered like I was. I, was, I had a taper to me that would make a pair of pants jealous. <laughs> I still think it's a pretty good line, and that's true, dude. I was looking at myself in the mirror at, at the um, at the gym today. Admittedly, haven't been going to the gym that much. And I need to get back in shape. I'm starting to get a little bit of a dad bod, but your boy's thick, dude. Your boy's thick. Your boy, your boy is. Your boy does have a taper to him. 
Your boy got has a wide back and a fairly small waist. So that taper is real. Um, but I did a squat workout at the gym today, and my, my teardrops are coming back in after one workout, I think. My my quads are popping a bit, but um, I, I have a powerlifting competition in December that I'm that I'm definitely gonna do because I didn't do the one this summer because I was too lazy to go to the gym. So December, it's like mid December, I have another powerlifting competition. So um, that will be fun. During that time, I probably won't drink only for the podcast. So that'll be interesting to see how my reviews go. Uh, so that's why I'm. Rec- I'm so tired right now recording at night. I had a pre-show pour of Four Roses Small Batch Select, which I don't think I've done on the podcast yet. Um, so we'll have to do that soon. We'll have to do that review soon. Um, what else did I drink this week? Um, I had a little bit of Buffalo Trace per usual. I posted a Instagram about that on Sunday. Um, and I've been drinking that pin hook. I really do like that pin hook. I kind of wish I gave it a little bit higher of a grade than 8.6, but... You know, you can't take it back. Once you once you say it, you can't take it back. It's 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 etched in stone. So maybe we'll do a a re or a, a we'll do a revisit of that. You know, episodes and episodes down the line, not anytime soon. But you never know. Eight point six. I think it's a little bit low for that pin hook. Also, shout out to pin hook. They liked my Instagram picture and, and commented on my Instagram picture. So that was pretty cool. Shout out to pin hook. I really do love pin hook, dude. I grew up with horses. I've always had a horse. We've always owned at least one horse, if not two. So, you know, it's just kind of cool. I like I like their uh, their crop idea that they do. How every barrel, how every how every blend's different. It's just a cool concept. But that was last week's episode, and um, that's not this week's episode. So, uh, that's I think that's all I've been drinking this week. I'm pretty sure that's all I've been drinking this week. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't think anything else. Oh, I had a sample of a of a whiskey from from uh, my friend Ron at uh, Wyoming Whiskey, but I don't remember what it was because I took a picture of it on my phone, but my phone is what's recording me, so can't look on my phone. Um, it was a corn whiskey out of like uh, I don't remember. It's a corn whiskey though. It was good. I enjoyed it. Um, that's what I've been drinking. That's what I've been drinking so far. I wanted to give another guy a shout out, so I'm going to go into a few shout outs before we before we get into the episode itself. Uh, I wanted to give this one guy a shout out. Uh, I've been meaning to for a bit. Um, I ask you guys every week, you know, go on go on to who gives a dram onto iTunes and leave a if you want a five star rating, and more importantly, leave a review. I have a few reviews in there right now, 13 five-star ratings, which thank you very much. That's awesome. Um, I have three reviews. One of them is from uh, my cousin, so that doesn't count. It just says, yeah, Big Boof 765. That's my cousin Ryan. Um, but I want to give these two people shout-outs that left reviews in November. And like I said, you guys, leave a review on iTunes. I, I want to start reading them on the show if – people start putting them in if not then we won't put them in obviously i won't start reading them if there's none to read um but driver joe 48 back in november uh left me a five star rating and said thanks for stepping out of your comfort zone and sharing your thoughts on all things whiskey i thought that was nice i thought that was nice because at the time definitely was stepping out of my comfort zone with with uh doing a solo podcast not knowing how long i could talk by myself for and now here we are now here we are, so 40 episodes in. So I thought that was nice. That made me smile um, when I saw that back in November. And then Jay Beard, Byard. Um, I'm pretty sure I know who this is. I'm pretty sure this is my friend Josh from uh, a whiskey friend of mine. He said, one of the most authentic whiskey podcasts out there, Connor. I spelled it with an E-R, but that's okay. Connor creates an experience that is valuable to both whiskey enthusiasts and newbies alike. That's what I'm going for on this podcast. Um, to to be able to sound smart enough where people who know about whiskey kind of value my opinions in some way. And then people who are new to whiskey kind of understand what I'm talking about as well. So those were two nice reviews, both five stars. 
um, leave a leave a uh, rating on iTunes. That 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 means a lot, and it does help us kind of move up the the rankings there. Um, and speaking about rankings, the other shout out I wanted to give today, besides that one dude Ryan, um, is uh, my buddies over at Bourbons with Friends. Um, good friends of the show, uh, good dudes all uh, all around. I talk to them fairly frequently. And they gave me a shout out on their podcast a little bit ago, and I never returned the favor. So I will right now. They recently became the number one whiskey podcast in the world, the number five podcast within the food category in, on iTunes, and that's just insane. Um, so the three of them over there um, work their ass off, you can tell, to, to, to make content. And to be a brand, which I very much appreciate. And there are three guys that I look up to, honestly. They're they're just three solid dudes decided to start a podcast during the pandemic, kind of like me. And they blew up. And they're very entertaining to listen to. Uh, they're, they're three, like I said, just solid, down-to-earth dudes um, who know their whiskey. And it's not just you listen to some to some whiskey podcasts and and sometimes even mine and you can tell you know sometimes they, they might not be experts i don't think any of us claim to be experts but um and i'm not saying bourbon with friends claim to be experts as well they're, they're the first people who say they're not experts but um a lot of their points a lot of their reviews a lot of their tasting notes are very very solid they sound smart they sound good they always make me laugh when I listen to them. So shout out to Burn with Friends, a very deserving number one spot within the whiskey community. Um, and I'm happy for them. I truly am happy for them. So um, I think it's important that all of us whiskey podcasts stick together. I, I am in contact with a lot of different whiskey podcasts. And the more we bring each other up, the more people, um, you know, the more this community grows. I think so. Um, yeah, shout out to Bourbon with Friends, man. What a what a what an accomplishment! And three dudes who did, who you know they just they deserve it. They work their ass off. So who knows? Maybe maybe sometime soon we'll have a Bourbon with Friends and who gives a dram crossover. If you guys are over at Bourbon with Friends, listen to this. Hit me up. We, we can maybe make something happen. I, I'd love to do that. Um, but those are the two shout outs I wanted to do this week. Those are them. Um, so with that being said, you guys, let's dive in to the whiskey. I haven't poured any yet. Let's pop it. We're going to pour it in our snoot glass. Go to www.snootglass.com. Promo code WG8020 for 20% off your entire order. The best nosing and tasting whiskey glasses on the market. I poured a lot of whiskey in there. I might not finish that. Um, some might need to get poured back into the bottle because this is more than I think I'm going to drink at 10 o'clock at night. Ooh, that smells good. Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel is essentially Elijah Craig Small Batch, you guys. It's it's Elijah Craig Small Batch that's taken out of the barrel at Barrel Proof, um, and it's re-barreled for an undisclosed amount of time, I think. I could be wrong about that. There's no age statement on the bottle. But, you know, uh, Elijah Craig um, Small Batch is 12 years old, I think. Let's, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let me grab the bottle. Don't mind the tricep on the, on the YouTube video, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, Elijah Craig, this is a single barrel. So like, you know, this is the one we did on the podcast. I think it's 12. I could be wrong. It could be 8. Ah, that's going to bother me. I don't want to Google it, though. It's going to take too much time. Anyways, it's Elijah Craig's small batch. It's taken out of the barrel at Barrel Proof, and it's re-barreled um, for an undisclosed amount of time in uh, kind of customized new charred oak toasted barrels. Um, they do it in partnership with a company called Independent Stave Company. It's a custom toasted new oak barrel. Um... This barrel is made with 18-month air-dried oak. And it's first that barrel is toasted. So it's put in the toaster. And then when it comes out of the toaster in about two minutes, it's flash charred um, using a moderate toast temperature and toast time. 
basically toasting a barrel to best of my knowledge is when they basically set it on fire from the inside so the inside gets all charred it's a charred barrel toasted and um now this wasn't a, a permanent line in the elijah craig in the elijah craig line now it is it's fairly allocated um it's got the same mash bill it's 78 percent corn 12 percent malted barley 10 percent rye at msrp's for around i'm gonna say 50 bucks we're gonna say 50 to 60 it's like a step below elijah craig barrel proof so we'll say elijah craig small batch is around like 30 maybe 35 if, if you're in an expensive state uh we'll say elijah craig toasted barrel is around 50 60 elijah craig barrel proof is anywhere from 60 to even upwards of 80 uh obviously this is uh produced and distilled by heaven hill distillery um this became a permanent line in the Elijah Craig lineup, a permanent bottle in the Elijah Craig lineup in September 2020. Um, and that's basically all you need to know about Elijah Craig barrel or toasted barrel, not barrel proof, toasted barrel. Toasted barrel, our small batch bourbon finished in toasted new oak barrels, 94 proof, 47% alcohol by volume. Um, distilled and bottled by the Elijah Craig Distillery Company, Bardstown, Kentucky, Heaven Hill. And we'll get right into it. So what I imagine this will smell, well, I've already smelled it, but you would think that this is going to smell oakier and basically darker than a than the Elijah Craig small batch simply because it's rebarreled. Let's see if that's true. On the nose, I get I get a lot of, I actually get a lot of that malt. It's very unique smelling because it doesn't smell anything like the small batch. I'm trying to put my hand on what it actually smells like. It's it's so unique and it's so like you can tell it smells like something, but I don't know what it smells like. Butterscotch. Not not a lot of oak. Maybe some toasted oak. It almost smells like plums. Like a dark fruit, like a like a plum or a like a ah, maybe not a plum. It's definitely a dark sweetness. So like a maybe I am thinking of like a plummy butterscotchy type of type of nose. I think do I have the website pulled up? I don't. Let me I got I got to see what we're See what we're playing with here. Let's see what Elijah Craig tells us it's supposed to smell like. That's where you want to go. Um, yeah. Aromas and flavors of pico tea, new leather, cinnamon, cedar, and jasmine. Okay. I definitely get caramel on this. That's actually what I'm smelling the most of. This is caramel. That's what I was trying to think of. That's what I could have put my nose on. This is caramel. This is butterscotch. This is a little bit of oak. Leather is definitely in there as well. I'm not getting a lot of spiciness. Matter of fact, I'm getting no spiciness on, on the nose. It's very dark. It's very deep. But it's not oaky. It's not oaky. It's a lot of caramel, butterscotch... Um, and a little bit of oak, no spice at all. That's what I'm getting with this. It smells great. It, sm it, it honestly smells different than any whiskey I've ever smelled before. Um, you know, it's nice when you can start to pick up different notes of whiskeys that you that you try. And you just know, like when I from now on, when I smelled this, when I smelled toasted barrel, this is blinded. I'd be like, all right, this is, that's toasted barrel, or I would I would be able to like at least pick out something in it. This is a very unique smell. Lots of caramel, lots of butterscotch, uh, and a little bit of oak. Um, you know, it's ah oh, man it's just good maybe a little bit of fruitiness in there as well like a like a 
like a rich fruit or like a like a lighter not a light like a juicy juicy fruit like apples but it's mainly that nice nice caramel like a you know what it almost smells like it almost smells like fluff like a peanut butter and fluff sandwich but without the peanuts so fluff <laughs> marshmallow is i guess and the reason I say that is because, like, if you, if it, it almost taste, it almost smells like how fluff tastes. Like, it's sweet and it's sugary, but it's like, it's just not, like, I guess when you taste a peanut butter and fluff, the fluff tastes a bit darker. At least that's how I remember it. Listen, my Nana makes the best peanut butter and fluff sandwiches in, on the face of the world. I think I've talked about this on the podcast before. I kind of, this kind of reminds me of Nana's peanut butter and fluff sandwiches in a, in a weird way that like when I really try to think about it, very good though. Very good. Let's drink some whiskey. It is, what time is it? It is 10 03 at night, Wednesday. I got a wedding to go to tomorrow with some beautiful people. I got a bachelor party to go to this weekend with some of my best friends in the entire world. Let's drink a little bit of whiskey tonight. You guys shout out to you guys listening. <coughs> Cheers, Schlante. Let's see what Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel tastes like. Oh. Tamer. It's definitely tamer. It's 94 proof. Doesn't hit you. A little bit of a softer finish there. Not a lot going on. But that initial explosion of flavor is very nice. That initial explosion into my mouth is fantastic. <laughs> uh, it's 10 o'clock. I'm tired. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's good. That caramel translates over to the taste or to the palate. A little bit more oak on the palate. Mm. Vanilla. Tad bit of a tad bit of spice, baking spice maybe. The palate definitely isn't as complex as the nose. It's not as deep as the nose, but it is still deep for a ninety-four proof whiskey. This is caramel. This is a little bit of baking spice, a little bit of cinnamon, more oak presence on the palate here. Um, it is light in the mouth, not a lot going on, not a big finish, a little bit of tobacco on the finish that I'm getting right now. Um, that sweet tobacco, like we talked about last episode, kind of like when you lick a cigar before you cut it. Um, yeah, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. chocolate a little bit of chocolate if you chew on it a little bit it does bring out a little bit of sugary sweetness as well darker this is a darker whiskey it's sweet to a point like for example i am getting a little bit of sweetness now a little bit hotter once you let it once you chew on it a bit um but it's darker notes of caramel and butterscotch a little bit of chocolate a little bit of spice, a little bit of cinnamon, some more pronounced oak on the palate, and and uh, and, and that standard vanilla bourbon taste. This is a fantastic whiskey, guys. This is great. This is fantastic. This would be a good fall whiskey, and I also think this would also this would be a good cigar whiskey as well. I have paired this with a cigar. I don't remember how it was, but those complex deeper notes i bet would go good with a mild cigar like a medium cigar i mean um i could see pat uh pairing this oh you know what this would pair good with a macanudo hide uh cafe hyde park this would pair fantastic with that macanudo cafe hyde park is one of my favorite cigars in the world i'm actually gonna buy one probably this week for this weekend to smoke up at the bachelor party um i know i might buy a pappy van winkle this weekend Pappy Van Winkle cigars are the best cigars. And I will take that to the grave. Those are great cigars. Um, 
side note, my cigars, I like my cigars to taste earthy. That's how, that's what I realized. I like when cigars taste like, to, like obviously tobacco, but like leather and hay. Those are my, I like hay. I like my cigars to taste like feed hay. Don't ask me why. It's what I like. It's what I want. It's what I like. Um, but going back to the Elijah Craig, yeah, yeah, this is uh, this is good. Let's see what they say on the on the um, taste here. Big, rich, and complex. Delightful spice and pepper notes fade to milk chocolate with just a hint of smoke. Really smoke. Let me try that. Yeah. It's not smoky like an Isla Scotch, but it's smoke. There's there's something there. I agree with that. Finish. Complexity continues nicely warming with lingering chocolate and baking spices. I do I do agree with that. It's not that complex, but it is warming. I I do wish that the finish was a bit better. Um not better, like that's not what I mean. I just for if I were crafting this to be perfect, the finish would be there a, a bit more. But this is 94 proof. Uh, you can't expect a huge finish with this. Um, yeah, no, this is um, this is a a fantastic whiskey. I think this is probably best enjoyed neat, seeing that it's 94 proof. And, you, I, and I tell you what, I'm probably going to finish this. There's a lot left in my snoot glass here. Shout out snoot glass. But I think I'm going to finish this tonight. Yeah, that's good. That oak becomes more pronounced with every sip I take, and I've taken quite a few sips already. That's because it's time for me to go to bed. Um, yeah, is there anything else we need to talk about? Um, I think this is a very unique bourbon. Um, toasted barrel finishes always intrigue me. Michter's comes out with the toasted barrel finish. Woodford has a double uh, has a as a double oaked, which we will do very soon on the pot. Not very soon. I don't, I don't own a bottle yet, but, um, I did pair that with a cigar a few weeks with, with a cigar a few weeks ago and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I'm going to get a bottle of that soon. Um, and hopefully do it on the podcast. And, um, you know, the toasted barrel finishing always intrigues me. Finishing with bourbons is a huge fa- uh, fad right now. You finish it with anything. There are whiskeys out there being finished in Cabernet Sauvignon casks. And it's very unique, and I'm all for it. I'm all for, you know, in, for furthering what whiskey can be down the line. Uh, Thomas H. Moore is doing a great job with that. You know, there's just the, th- Those are just the first ones that come to my mind with, like, Chardonnay casks, Cabernet casks. Um, I think that's very cool. Um, this also, this is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, and it can be called a a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey still because each barrel is still a new charred oak cask. So they're not not re-barreling the whiskey in a used cask. They're re-barreling it in a a brand new, unique cask. So still considered a straight bourbon whiskey. I think that's pretty cool. Um... Yeah, I I I think that for fifty bucks, man, this is a very a very unique whiskey. I wish I had a bit more on the finish. I love the nose. I love the nose. I think that I think the palate's great as well. I don't think it is as good as the nose. The nose is great. The nose of man, just that caramel, deep, dark, fruity, butterscotchy oak a little bit. It's a great nose. Uh, the the palate is nice with a little bit more com- um, spicy notes. That cinnamon undertones of like uh, of tobacco. A little bit of seasoned wood, oak is in there. I'm kind of perplexed as to what to give this in terms of a who gives a dram score. If I saw this for anything above sixty bucks, I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't pay barrel proof money for this. That being said, sixty dollars. I think fifty fifty dollars is definitely a fair price for this. Um, sixty dollars is on the high end, but I would pay it, and I would recommend you pay it as well. Um, everything considered, 
availability can't really find it a whole lot actually can't i can never find it so that's going to affect my score here a little bit i'm going to say this is a 8.5 yeah lock that in 8.5 stamp that who gives a dram score um very solid bourbon very solid bourbon um buy it if you see it um I'm I'm happy I own it. I will buy another one if I do see another one. Um, just another hitter by Elijah Craig. Elijah Craig might be my favorite whiskey brand now. I mean, I love everything Elijah Craig. They have a barrel-proof customer f- with me for life. Elijah Craig, if you want to sponsor the show, you can. <laughs> I will allow you. <laughs> um, but, yeah, seriously, I'm going to make my way down to Kentucky here soon. I hopefully heaven hill somewhere i can at least look at at least drive by and look at if not go in and check it out um if anyone from elijah craig's listening wants to be on the podcast man hit my line hit my dms 8.5 for elijah craig toasted barrel i'm gonna enjoy finishing this off tonight um but with that being said you guys i gotta go to bed i got some stuff i gotta do before i go to bed but i'm gonna do that in bed in order in order to do that i gotta love off the podcast so what do we have for time? 36 minutes is just about where we got to be. Um, you guys, thank you for tuning in to episode 40 of Who Gives a Dram. Uh, can you believe it? 40 episodes, really? Um, the best way to support the podcast, you guys, is just by subscribing. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. YouTube's a big one. Any other podcast platform out there, uh, we're on Buzzsprout, uh, Overcast, Stitcher, Breaker, Google Podcasts, um, Podcast Addict, Pod bean um pandora just anywhere you listen to a podcast you guys make sure you're subscribed um and if you really like the show what i want you guys to do if you're still listening at this point if you're still listening at the end of this episode here's what i want what i want you to do to prove to me you're still listening leave a review on itunes leave a review for me on itunes i'll read it on the show i'll give you guys a shout out and you know what maybe we can do something else cool for everyone who leaves a review and be honest if you don't like the show tell me i'll i'll take it I'll take it. That's all good. It's all gravy. It's all good. Um, I love doing this show, and I'm happy we're here at 40 episodes, and we're going to do another 40 episodes, and another 40 episodes after that, and after that, and after that. Um, I have a lot of cool things planned. Um, I did mention we were going to have some special guests on this week. Scheduling conflicts uh, prevented that from happening, but that will be happening very soon within the next couple weeks. So be on the lookout for a few special guests here on the podcast and drinking some good whiskey. Um, But until then, you guys, until next week, I'm going to head out. My brother Nick Boss is going to play me out. What happened to country available everywhere to stream. And you guys, don't forget, whiskey is the water of life. So let's start living. My hands are tired. Paying my bills, staring at a bottle, I'm aiming to kill. The weeks passing by and the seasons to change, and I'm playing my song, trying to make me a name. People say as they walk out the bar The kids go on places, maybe even a star but They don't play country down in Nashville today Just the same chord progression With nothing to say What happened to country? Three chords and the truth And who's gonna step up? Fill their big shoes Writing songs about outlaws Singing all night And songs that'll make A grown man cry They use auto-tune now down on Music Row 
true country died there a long time ago. No, they don't play whaling on the boulevard, but they'll do anything to be rock stars. What happened to country? Three chords and the truth. And who's gonna step up and fill their big shoes? Writing songs about our loss. Singing all night and songs that'll make a grown man cry. hope for us yet cause there's millions of people who cannot forget the way Johnny Cash brought a tear to their eyes or how Marty Robbins painted Texas skies what happened to country the cards and the truth and who's gonna step up and fill their big shoes writing songs about outlaws Singing all night and songs that'll make a grown man cry. A grown man cry. A grown man cry. I won't let country die.